Okay, here is the video for the runs on the first page of the Symphony Espanol by Lalo. Nice and slow practice video for you. All right, so first off, let's just do the first four notes. And then backwards. Double check your intonation. Play double strings, open strings. Okay, then we're going to do the shift between the fourth and the fifth note. Goes from an E to a G. Do the siren practicing that I've showed before. You go. So forwards and backwards. Nice and slow and then faster. And then faster. sure it's in tune. If it helps, play with the tuner or with your open strings as well. Okay, now we're going to play from the um, beginning of the run. Backwards. Save your bow because you have to do eight notes in your in your bow. So I'm using very little bow. Okay, now we're gonna add in the next note, which is the B. Oh, but don't do a B. <laughs> don't do a B natural. Do a B flat. Oh my. Okay, here we go. All eight notes go nice and slow at first. Backwards. In tune as best you can. Once you get it super good in tune, then you can move on a little faster. I like to do a little bit of an accent on the beginning of each of those four notes. So a little teeny tiny accent. And go backwards, accent. And I know we're not going to play the run backwards, however, if you can play it backwards and forwards, can definitely play it forwards. <laughs> so it helps a lot to do it both ways. A little faster after you've gotten that really, really good on your own. So. Okay, what also helps? Different rhythms. You can go. rhythms really help when you're trying to clean things up and things are super fast. Okay, so we need to do the next four notes. So let's start from this um, fifth note. So the second beat of that measure. So we have... We have to practice the siren shift from a D to the G. So...
so the slow, medium, and then super fast, totally in tune. Once you are playing out of tune, stop and do not go any faster. Go a little slower and make sure you can nail it in tune before you go any faster. Okay, so now we need to practice from the D. Okay, that's a bit confusing. So because the G, the last eight notes are on a different bow, I'm gonna practice from the D to the E. Go back to the D, do the shifting, and then practice getting that up bow on the G. So I have D, E, D, siren shift, switch bows. And then I just go back to it backwards. So whatever combination works for you, but this helps me so that I can get the notes before the shift and then practice practice it to the shift with switching my bow. So I didn't get that 100% in tune, so I need to make sure I still practice it slower. going to add in one more note, the third finger. So, and then backwards. So, I'm still doing the anchor note. I'm just not playing it as prominently as in my slow practicing, so. shift with your arm around don't do any you know worm creeping things going up like that so okay so let's start from the beginning of the run nice and slow I didn't nail the shift, so guess what? If that happens to you, like it just happened to me, go back and practice it some more. Because obviously, don't go on unless you can nail it. So I need to practice it some more. So. so I practice that over and over and over. Until I'm like, crazy! So many times, I'm just like, ah! Going crazy about it. Okay, and then I try again. Now go backward. Forward. Backwards. you're in 
in tune and you don't run out of bow. Sometimes I do that. Okay, let's go on. So now we need to go from an E to a high G. The eight with the dot, remember, is eight BA, which is an octave higher than what is written. So we need the anchor note. So let's actually have an E to a G, but we're gonna go from the D. Not that one, but this one. Go up, siren shift to the G. Now make sure it's completely in tune. I play the open G to match it. So as you've noticed, I start the siren immediately as I change my bow. So I'm going to start, so I start sliding right as I change. Change my bow, start sliding. Some people will hang on to it like this and then slide. Um, I don't think that's the best approach. However, I'm sure there's nothing, it could happen, but I think the best approach is to start right away. So. So you can do it in sort of a, a rhythm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or whatever you want to count to. So it's hard to do. But I think it's the best way. Slow. Once you get the hang of it, this one's gonna be super hard. You're gonna want to shoot your finger out like this and your wrist back. Make sure not to do that because you still have to go even higher than that. So make sure you come around the violin. Your elbow is very under. I can see my whole arm at this point. So. A little faster. Really in tune. That's super hard to do. So, as you notice, when I go faster, my finger kind of fumbles. So if yours does that, like mine did, let's go back a little bit and do it a little slower, okay? So we can just like lock it in immediately. Instead of going up and being like, oh, fumble around, and then you get it, and go back and fumble around. So, make sure not to fumble. Okay, so once you get the hang of that, just realize that now we have to actually go from the E to the G. So we have, I go with the D, E, D, G. So D, E, and then backwards. faster. Make sure you get high enough. And then I take out that going back to the D, which is super hard. So now we're going to So we do exactly what we practice, but we don't play the anchor note. We don't play the D and slide up. We, we don't hear it. We actually keep our finger down, but we don't. I don't play it so you don't hear the, the siren part, so. But I always make sure I keep my first finger down. I never lift it off. So let's keep going, finish it out. So from a G to a B flat. 
So the fingering I do here is one, two, three, one, two. The last five notes of the run. One, two, three, one, two. That was, works for my fingering, or for my hand, my fingers. You might want to do it a different way. Either way, you still just have to work on getting it really good and in tune. really high. Remember when you're up super, super high, the spacing between the notes is way smaller. So you don't have to move your fingers very, very much in order for it to go to the next note um, compared to in the first position. Okay, let's do a bow because this will be a bow eventually. I would keep the first finger down the whole time that you play those notes because you're going, you're starting with a G and you're going back to the D. So you so you'll have that anchor. It'll be easier intonation-wise. So I practice it over and over. I know there's not a shift, but because it's so high and the spacing's weird, I would practice it quite a bit so you can get used to that. Whoops. G to a B flat. over and over and over again and faster after that Whew. okay so let's do the whole run pretty slow at the moment but remember to save your bow and do a little accent every on the beginning of every beat <clears throat> Again. Okay, so the hardest part for me, intonation, is the last four or five notes, especially the high D. So make sure you keep that better in tune than I can get it at the moment, but we'll get it. Here we go. That's so hard, right? So aim a teeny bit higher. In my case, I need to aim a little bit higher than, than um, normal. Okay, here we go again. haunt me. I need to make sure I get it right. Okay, a lot of people will play this note nice and long. Remember it's an eighth note. It's quite short, not super long. So, so you can do a full bow but nice and fast. Okay, Whew. I think we got it, right? Let's try it one more time. <clears throat> so the orchestra or the piano goes don 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 again nice good job <laughs>